All right, it's about 6 a.m., which means it's uh, time for some more bare metal programming. In my last video, I talked about how you can blink an LED with nothing but uh, assembly on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And that's only half the battle, because there are two cores on the uh, RP2040. And this morning, I'm going to talk about how you can uh, turn on the second core and really use the full power of your chip. So, as always, you'll need the documentation. So here we have uh, section 2.3, uh, the processor subsystem. This is the, uh, the general architecture of the RP2040. We have two cores, and then we have this single cycle IO block in between. So this is kind of like the intermediary, intermediary between the cores and the rest of the system. So like uh, last video, we were using the GPIO. But um, if we take a closer look at the single cycle I.O. block, there are a couple registers here. So we have these two cores, and then there's this bus interface. And this bus interface is what's used to access uh, these registers. And what these, these top four are what we really care about. These two CPU ID registers, and then we have two FIFAs. So the CPU ID registers... Um, It'll be the same address for both cores, but when core 0 reads the uh, register, it'll return a 0, and when core 1 re reads the register, it'll return a 1. So this is a great way to like figure out, so your co code can figure out what core it's being executed from. So let's write a simple, uh, let's write a simple program to kind of flex this register. Um, if I, all right, here we go. So uh, CO base uh, hex D and then seven zeros. So let's go CO base and then is four bytes. And then here's our address. Is that? Yeah, seven zeros. And then let's just say we'll load the address to R0, and then we'll load the uh, value of R0 to R1. So what what's ever in the uh, very beginning of the CO is the CPU ID. And then let's say we compare that value to 0. And we'll say if they're equal, we'll branch to, let's say we have a function LED. And uh, let's pull up our code from uh, last time. So, yeah, let's. we're not going to blink this time. Let's just grab this. Uh, so here's our LED function. Uh, we're not going to loop. Let's just keep it here. Let's create a loop at the end. So our code doesn't run off somewhere. Now right, we can get rid of this. Um, I think this is all the uh, addresses we'll need for now. So let's save this. Actually, let's say if this doesn't, um, we'll just branch to loop if it's not equal. Now before we run this, we ought to set the alignment as always. All right, everything's built. And then I can plug in my Pico. and the LED turns on. So if I set this to one, so say if it is CPU ID one, it'll turn on the LED. I plug it back in. As you can see, the LED doesn't turn on since it is not core one. So how do we make it core one? Well, what we'll need to do is use the uh, FIFO. So if we go back up here, the FIFO is this 
uh, tool used by the CO to kind of prevent race conditions. So it's a way for the cores to communicate without uh, touching the same data. So we have two FIFOs. One FIFO is only writable by core zero and readable by core one. And the other FIFO is only writable by core one and readable by core zero. So we kind of have these two registers that um, are used for like one way data. So here the data can only go this way, here the data can only go this way. And if we look at the uh, where's the functions. So then if we take a look at the actual functions of the FIFO, uh, we have three FIFO registers. We have FIFO status, FIFO write, and FIFO read. So FIFO status, we have four bits. Um, the two upper ones are just error flags, but the first bit is, uh, this will tell us if the core is not empty. So this bit will be set if there's data in the FIFO. And then uh, the second bit, uh, the ready bit, will tell us if the um, FIFO is not full. So we can put more data in the FIFO. So let's start writing some code. We'll need uh, we'll need three functions. Uh, first, let's call it FIFO write. And first thing we'll need to do is load our CO base address. And then let's load the status register. Um, so just CO base and uh, what's the offset? 50, that is five times 16. That's 80 in hex, I mean 80 in decimal and divide by four, so that's 20. So we have an offset of 20. And then let's move, um, we'll need to make sure that the FIFO, we can, uh, it's not full. So let's load two into R2, and then let's and them. Let's and R3 and R2. So if the bit is set in uh, the status register, then that will tell us that we can go ahead and proceed to write. If it's not, if it's uh, if we return a zero, so branch if equal, since that's the uh, if the zero flag is set, we'll just go back to the beginning and wait until we can write. So if we can proceed, then um, let's say our uh, let's say our parameter register is R one. So let's store r1 into r0 and the read register i mean yeah the, the right register is the uh, register right after the status register so we'll need uh, a 21 and then after that we'll send an event to kind of let the other core know that uh, we sent data and then we'll just go back to the link register pretty straightforward for our um for our read function, very similar process. Um, I'll just copy this code. Uh, there's a couple differences. This has to be a one because we're ch making sure that the uh, CO is not empty because if it is, we're just reading garbage. Um, and then we'll, instead of branching back to the uh, beginning, we'll need to have a uh, another little loop and this will uh, wait for the event. So when we write, we send an event. When we read, we'll need to wait for an event. So we'll w wait for an event and then we'll branch back to the beginning. So then let's branch if equal, wait for event. And then we'll load R1 into 22, uh, since that's the, the read register is the next register. And we're not sending an event, so we'll just, br just branch back to the link register. And then the third function we'll need is a drain function. So when we start using the cores, there might be uh, stuff in the FIFO. 
So we'll need to make sure the FIFA is empty. Uh, we'll just load R0 CO base. And then we'll load R1. Um, we'll just read from the CO. We'll read from the FIFA. And then we'll read the status register. So very similar with uh, the read function. Let's move one to R2. And then we'll and them. And let's say if uh, it doesn't return zero, then we'll need to go back to the beginning because we need to make sure that there is nothing in the FIFO. So we're completely draining the FIFO so this is our drain function and then we'll need to send an event and then branch back to the link so these are the only three functions we'll need now how do we actually turn on the second core what's like you know the meat and the potatoes of this video so uh we'll need to go to it's not in the boot sequence yeah boot rom and yeah 2.82 and okay code for launching the uh, processor core one here it is in C um, this is just the code to turn on since we're pretty cool we're gonna use assembly but this is the basic command sequence so we're sending six values over the FIFO uh, 001 and then the vector table the stack pointer and the entry point this is where our code starts executing now there are some nuances. Uh, first, when we write data to the FIFO, the um, kind of the default code for the other core is to just send it right back to us. So we can use that to make sure that the core got the data. So as you can see in the code, we'll um, we'll drain the FIFO if the uh, value is zero, and then we'll push the data onto the FIFO and then we'll read it back and we'll say if the uh, if we didn't get our data back if we got something else then we have to start all over again so let's start writing that code first we'll need to um, define our stack pointer so let's just say SRAM yeah we'll, we'll need two values we'll need our SRAM base So that is just 0x uh, to whatever. And then we'll need our stack pointer, which will be around there. Uh, just go 2,000, 1,000. So then up here, let's first initialize our stack pointer. And just load straight into the stack pointer I think um, is that valid we'll find out and then we start uh, start our sequence so we'll need six blocks uh, first let's just go branch link uh, FIFO drain so let's clear out that FIFO and then we're sending a zero over, so let's move zero into R1. And then we're calling um, FIFA right. And then we're calling FIFA read. And then we're comparing R1 with zero. So if they are not equal we'll have to um, let's create a new symbol up here we'll go back to our the very beginning of the function so branch if not equal core and then we need to do this twice because we have two zeros and then our third time around we're uh, we're not going to drain we're just going to send a one over and we should expect a one back. 
and then now is the uh, kind of the heavy code. So first we'll need to send a vector table. Now, I'm still not entirely sure what a vector table is, but uh, I don't really care, and neither should you. So we're just going to send it junk. Um, let's just send it to SRAM. So let's load R1, uh, and then let's, the SRAM base. It, sh it should accept that. And then we'll write that. Actually, we'll need to, um, since we need to compare it, let's, and let's just move. So we'll move R, R3 into R1. So we'll still have this around. Actually, we're already using R3, so we'll need to use R4. Um, yeah, we're using R3 right here. So we'll write, and then we'll read. And then we'll compare R1 with R4. And if they're not equal, we'll go back to the beginning. And then we need our stack pointer. And then we need our entry point. So because this is thumb mode, we um, we need to be at an offset of one for the program counter. So I'm just gonna take, uh, the SRAM should still be in R4. So let's add one to R4. So now we're at uh, this address plus one. And uh, that's just a weird oddity of ARM. Thumb mode is always going to have the least significant bit set. And because this is a uh, thumb only uh, chip, we always need to be in thumb mode. So we'll add that. And then let's move R4 back into uh, uh, R1. Need a comma there. So then same thing before we're branching to the FIFA right so then we just compare again and as always we'll branch if not equal back to the beginning and this should do it so we have our vector table our stack pointer and our entry point um, Quick note, it is not a good idea to give your, both your cores the same stack pointer since that's literally asking for a race condition. But we're not actually using the stack, we just need to give it a valid uh, address. So this is fine for now. But now, um, so when the other core gets to this entry point, it should come back to the very beginning here, which then should just start executing this code. So if everything works, we should, um, the LED should turn on. All right, let's assemble. Ah, oh, shit. All right, uh, we'll have to initialize the stack point of the uncool way. So now if I plug my Pico back in, And then drop this UF2. Uh, oh, we still have this alignment. All right, there we go. That LED was turned on by core one. And if you don't believe me, um, let's change this to a two. So now, if I, if I'm asking if are you core, uh, if you are you core three, which obviously core three doesn't exist, it doesn't turn on. This uh, LED only turns on when being executed by core one. And uh, there you have it. Uh, this Pico is now running code 
on both cores 